Gordon goes foreign. Lots of people travel to the big station at the end of the line. Engines from the other railways sometimes pull their trains. These engines stay the night and go home next day. Gordon was talking one day to one of these. When I was young and green, he said, I remember going to London. Do you know the place? The station's called King's Cross. King's Cross? snorted the engine. London's Euston. Everybody knows that. Rubbish, said Duck. London's Paddington. I know. I worked there. They argued till they went to sleep. They argued when they woke up. They were still arguing when the other engine went away. Stupid thing, said Gordon crossly. I've no patience. Stupid yourself, said Duck. London's Paddington. Paddington! Do you hear? Stop arguing, James broke in. You make me tired. You both agreed about something anyway. What's, What's that? that? London's not Euston, laughed James. Now shut up. Gordon rolled away, still grumbling. I'm sure it's King's Cross. I'll go and prove it. But that was easier said than done. London lay beyond the big station at the other end of the line. Gordon had to stop there. Another engine then took his train. If I didn't stop, he thought, I could go to London. One day, he ran right through the station. Another time, he tried to start before the fireman could uncouple the coaches. He tried all sorts of tricks, but it was no good. His driver kept him every time. Oh dear, he thought sadly. I'll never get there. One day, he pulled the express to the station as usual. His driver uncoupled the coaches and he ran onto his siding to wait till it was time to go home. The coaches waited and waited at the platform, but their engine didn't come. A porter ran across and spoke to Gordon's driver. The inspector's on the platform. He wants to see you. The driver climbed down from the cab and walked over to the station. He came back in a few minutes, looking excited. Hello, said the fireman. What happened? The engine for the express turned over when it was coming out of the yard. Nothing else could come in or out. They want us to take the train to London. I said we would, if the fat controller agreed. They telephoned and he said we could do it. How's that? Fine, said the fireman. We'll show them what the fat controller's engines can do. Come on, said Gordon. Let's go. He rolled quickly over the crossings and backed onto the train. It was only a few minutes before the guard blew his whistle, but Gordon thought it was ages. Come on, come on. He puffed to the coaches. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're going to town, we're going to town, sang the coaches slowly at first, then faster and faster. Gordon found that London was a long way away. Never mind. He said, I like a good long run to stretch my reels. But all the same, he was glad when London came in sight. The fat controller came into his office next morning. He looked at the letters on his desk. One had a London postmark. I wonder how Gordon's getting on, he said. The station master knocked and came in. He looked excited. Excuse me, sir, have you seen the news? Not yet. Why? Just look at this, sir. The fat controller took the newspaper. Good gracious me, he said. There's Gordon. Headlines, too. Famous engine at London Station. Police called to control crowds. The fat controller read on, absorbed. Gordon returned next day. The fat controller spoke to his driver and fireman. I see you had a good welcome in London. 
We signed We certainly did, did, sir. We signed, we signed autographs till our arms ached, and Gordon had his photograph taken, taken from so many directions, directions, directions at once that, that he didn't, didn't know which way, way to look. Good. Smiled the fat controller. I expect he enjoyed himself, didn't you, Gordon? No, sir. I didn't. Why ever not? London's all wrong, answered Gordon sadly. They've changed it. It isn't King's Cross anymore. It's St. Pancreas.